Welcome to the Dentamax Tip of the Week. In this week's tip, I want to go back to some of the basics. So what we're going to do is create a patient appointment for a new patient and also an existing patient. We'll start by going to the scheduler just by clicking on scheduler up at the top of the screen. And of course our calendar is interactive so we can choose our day that we want to schedule the patient just by clicking on that date. Decide which time slot you're going to give the patient and in which operatory. Once you do so, the simplest way to create an appointment is just to double click on the time slot. We'll say nine o'clock in operatory two. From there, if we have an existing patient that we're putting into the system, you can start typing in their last name because this patient search field searches based on the chart number. The chart number is based on the first three letters of the patient's last name and then the first two letters of their first name. And then of course a unique three digit code if there is someone else with the same first five characters. Once you start typing in the name, the system will take you to the closest person that you've found so far based on what you've typed in. So at that point you can just select them from your patient list. We'll see our alert pop up if there is anything relevant that you've put into the system for the patient. Their patient information will populate here, including any phone numbers if you have that on their patient information screen. If you are using appointment colors, you can go ahead and select a color for the patient's appointment. And over off to the right, the operatory will be pre-selected and perhaps also the provider if you do have one default provider in your system. Otherwise, you could choose which provider this patient will be seeing for this appointment. We have the date pre-selected and the time of the appointment. We just need to change how long the appointment is. You can go up in increments of 5, 10, 15 minutes, depending on the time intervals that you have set in the system. Otherwise, you can just highlight over it and put in a 60-minute appointment or however much time you need for this. We do have a note section if you wanted to put in that the patient has a toothache or perhaps that they may be running a little late today and any other pertinent notes to this patient's appointment. If this is an existing patient, the only place these notes are going to show up is on this one appointment. If this is a new patient, which we'll do next, then the notes will carry over onto the patient's information screen once you create their patient file from the appointment. If the patient would like a sooner appointment, you can go ahead and place them on the ASAP list just by checking that box. And then we'll go ahead and attach service codes for this appointment by either looking at their treatment plan, which I'd suggest always checking before you schedule something else for the patient, just so you don't end up with duplicate service items like I have here. So if the patient is coming in for, let's say, these three fillings, you can either click on the service code and drag that item down and drop it into the treatment plan for this appointment. Or you can select the item and use your arrow down button as well. So I've got three fillings scheduled for the patient. If I close the screen, we're gonna see those attached to this appointment. And then perhaps we wanna add an exam and a PA as well to this appointment. Your other two options for scheduling service codes to the appointment is adding from a multi-code which if I chose emergency exam, it's gonna add on a certain type of exam that you have set in your system and a PA. I'm gonna go ahead and remove those items. My alternative is selecting a new treatment item and punching in my code. We'll go with a D0120. I'm gonna click save and new, and then I'm gonna choose my PA, D0220. Since that's the only other code I want to put in, at this point I'm just going to click Save. So now we have the patient scheduled for three fillings, a periodic exam, and a PA. I have a 60-minute appointment that's high production. I'm going to go ahead and click Save Changes to save this appointment to our schedule. And depending on the information you have set in the system for the patient, you may get a recall box that pops up on you at this point. What this is telling us is that the patient is due for a recall date as of June 1st of last year. Do we want to automatically schedule the appointment now? Do we want to take them off of the recall list? Do we want to change the date that they're next eligible for to a different date? Or do we want to leave the date as is and do nothing? In this scenario, we're just going to select do not change and click OK. And now we have our appointment on the schedule for our existing patient, John Smith, 
for the three fillings, exam and PA, and the red dot is indicating that it is an unconfirmed appointment. If we are creating an appointment for a new patient, we're gonna go about it in a very similar way. You're going to choose the date in which you wanna schedule the patient, decide upon a time, we'll go with 10 o'clock in operatory one, and once again, just double click within that time slot. Now, because this is a new patient, we don't have them in our patient list to search for. So we're gonna skip right past the patient search field and simply type in the patient's demographic information. We'll go ahead and put in the patient's last name and then first, home phone number if they have one, work number. And you do not have to put any dashes or spaces into the phone number field. The computer will format that for you. Since this is a new patient, if you do have a new patient color, you wanna go ahead and select that for the appointment. Choose the provider you're scheduling them with, and then how long the appointment is going to take. If you plug in an email address here, it will store on the patient's information screen as well as any other information that you put into this new patient. I do have an option in my options menu to show additional information in order to get a pop-up box for the street address if you like to mail out paperwork ahead of time before the patient comes in. The system will skip past the city and state because it does memorize those items once you put in the, the postal code that is attached to the city and state for the first time. So it happens to know 85711 is for Tucson, Arizona, so it filled that in for me. And the other nice piece of information you can put onto this is what provider referred the patient to you or how they found you in another type of re referral source, such as Yellow Pages, Google Search, um, something to that effect. If they were referred by another provider, you certainly want to make sure you note that so that you could send them either a thank you letter or a report updating that doctor on the patient's status. Otherwise, we can go ahead and choose just for marketing purposes and tracking that information, how the patient found you. And then again, of course, we have our notes section. In this space, there's a little additional information you might want to put into the notes section, such as if the patient premedicates. what they're coming in for specifically, or if they have any issues that you wanted to point out so that you make sure you, that gets addressed as part of the new patient appointment. If they have any dental insurance, you can go ahead and put a note on the appointment with that information as well. Some offices may have a new patient slip that they collect this data on, and if that's the case, you don't necessarily have to put it into the computer system. However, whatever you do put onto this new patient appointment will carry over onto the patient's information screen when you create their patient file. So if it's something that you'd like to have in the system as just a noted item, you would wanna go ahead and plug it into this space as well. Now, if you're trying to go paperless and you don't have a piece of paper that you fill this information out on, obviously there's more than enough room to put in any sort of data that you need to. And patient will arrive 15 minutes early for paperwork is another thing that I would perhaps note on here. Now, because this is a new patient in our service codes, to add those to this appointment, we don't have the option to add from a treatment plan because they don't have a treatment plan yet. However, if you did have a multi-code for a new patient, you could go here and go ahead and select that multi-code or I can select an existing multi-code and attach the D0150 for the comprehensive exam instead of a periodic. If I double click on that item, it'll allow me to edit it and I'll just go ahead and select the comp exam, save my changes. And now I have a new patient appointment for comp exam, profi, and bite wings. Obviously, the service codes you put onto the appointment is gonna vary depending on your office and the situation that the patient has. But at this point, I can go ahead and just save my changes to save this appointment to my schedule without actually creating the patient's information screen yet. Some offices do this because they don't want to have a file for the patient in their system until the patient actually shows up on their doorstep ready for the appointment. Other offices will go ahead and create the patient file 
at this point just so they can link up the insurance information and maybe use their real-time eligibility to verify insurance and some other pieces of data that they might want to store into the system. At this point, when the patient does come in, I can go ahead and double click on the appointment and change the status here to ready to be seen, save my changes, and then I can go ahead and create their patient file. I have the same little person with the paper icon here in my options menu that I have on the appointment, and that is the icon that's going to indicate to you that this is a new patient without a record created yet. So I'll select create the patient file, and again, all of the data that I put onto the appointment does carry over into their patient information screen. So we already have their address and phone numbers email listed. We've got that notes section that populates the notes section of their patient information screen. And then down here towards the bottom, their referral source or referring provider if you've entered that information. Now as far as activating the patient goes, that's the one click you have to do in order to make this patient functional in your system. You can go back and fill in the rest of their patient information just by selecting the appointment and clicking on view patient info when you're ready. But once their file is created and they're an active patient, the back office and other members of the staff can go ahead with accessing the patient's chart or perhaps taking x-rays for the patient and proceed as usual. If the patient doesn't happen to show perhaps John Smith, again, you do have some options by double-clicking on the appointment and changing the status of the appointment, but there are more options available through another route. I'm going to go ahead back to this appointment and I'm going to make sure we select the appointment just by left clicking on it. You know you've selected the appointment because it has this blue halo surrounding it. And now I'm going to right click on the appointment for my options. I'm going to go down to change status. I might go ahead and mark this appointment as a will call appointment, meaning that the patient will call us to reschedule or will be calling them to reschedule. If I truly wanted to track that they missed this appointment, I can go ahead and mark it as a missed appointment, put in my reason, save that, and either leave the appointment on the schedule or once again right click on the appointment, go to change status, and put it on my will call list if I want to remove it from the schedule and hold it as a resource later to reschedule from my will call list. For you beginners out there, I hope this was a helpful lesson, and if you have any further questions, of course, feel free to contact Dentamax at 1-800-704-8494. Thank you.